specimen of the silkworm. And uh, here, this is their eyes, the silkworm eyes. And uh, they only lay their eyes on the mulberry leaves. It's a special kind of tree, only the mulberry leaves, not other trees. And uh, when the wider become warmer, the little eyes will become little babies. So when they become the little babies, they can eat, and uh, they just uh, eat the mulberry leaves and uh, grow bigger and bigger. This is about uh, five days babies, five days, yeah, only five days, five days big. And uh, this one is uh, ten days big, yes. This is a. Uh, 15 days babies this big and uh, this one so you can see they grow faster so this one is uh, 20 days yes and uh, this one is almost the biggest this is just 25 days 25 days so in the later stage they grew really fast and uh, when they grew this big they stop eating they stop eating the mulberry leaves and uh, the, they start to spend silk from their mouth and the silk will around their body so they will trap themselves inside and in the meantime their body will become smaller and harder like this one inside they become the pupa you can see here, and uh, their body becomes smaller, and uh, out outside the surface of their body become hard, and uh, outside they become the cocoon, and uh, some of them will just die in the cocoon, some of them will bite on the cocoon and uh, get out of it. So uh, after they get out of the cocoon, they become the moth. Um, like a butterfly, but not actually a butterfly. Yeah, this, so uh, the male and the, f the female, after the mouth came together, and uh, the female will lay eggs, so it become a life cycle. Their whole life is just about uh, two months, it's very short. And uh, here, we only use the cocoons of them to make silk. You may feel it. Actually, yeah, you can share it. How do you take it out from, from, from this? From this? Yeah, silk. Yeah, from, we, from this stage? From this cocoon. Uh -huh. Yeah, inside I will let you. Uh, actually, we have uh, two different kinds of cocoons. You can see here clearly. One is bigger, the other is smaller, right? So, yeah, thank you. Sir. Yeah, it's okay. Just so place them here. And uh, for the bigger cocoon, we call it double cocoon. For the smaller one, we call it single cocoon. What's the difference? Yeah, the single cocoon, only one silkworm inside. And uh, for the double cocoon, two silkworms inside, yes. So, uh, you know what will happen when they start to spend silk around their body? For the single cocoon, only one silkworm spends silk around their body. So actually, double cocoon, the bigger one, it's not so easy to find one single thread. They all messed up. So the threads will cross over like this. So we can't find the end of the double cocoon. And uh, we deal it with different ways. So we have different ways to process it. Uh, so before we get into that, oh, well, I need uh, more than that. Like this. Uh, there's no flame, right? And uh, yeah, like this. Okay, I think I should use this one. It's a bit more easier to And uh, you can see here. The silk. You can see. Yeah, it will not be easy. To Shame, but it still works. And uh, all of the cocoon, they are the single cocoon. You can see it's a smaller one. And 
and uh, actually we need to put the cocoa in the hot water to kill the silver inside first and uh, make the cocoon soft and then uh, you can see there's a special brush there has many special devices for this and uh, here I'm gonna use it to stir around here and uh, try to find the end of the single cocoon yes and uh, it made like this yeah you can see the thread of the and uh, you may feel the thread of it if you like to try you want to feel it the thread yeah like this yeah, it's uh, stronger, yeah. So this is how the silk works. You just collect the thread in this way. Our workers will separate the worms and the cocoon and uh, overline the cocoon to that smaller ring. I just uh, uh, usually overline 10 cocoons and then remove it to the bigger ring like this. It's very sticky. You can see how you stretch it. It will break because in the very first beginning the silk was crossed over. That made them uh, sticky and uh, you may punch it. It can bear a lot of strain. It's very sticky. And after we dried it and uh, disinfected it, it became like this material. It's very soft and light and uh, because the whole process we just uh, by stretching it, you know. So all the fabric are the long fabric. There's no short fabric. So there's no dust, then there's no worm leaving the dust. And uh, because the silk is uh, out from the worm's body, so it contains a lot of protein, just like our hair. So this material is also anti-allergy. Even someone has asthma, it will be okay, there will be no allergy, there will be no reaction to the silk products. But this one is all raw material, we still need to do something with this one. We use it in a special way, we use it to make quilts. And uh, in that, our forums are ready to show you how do we do with the raw material. So please. Yeah, so it becomes like a bigger layer. So does anyone want to try it? Okay, everybody, it's a team for a little dollar. So, Jonas. Okay, hold it and pull it slowly. Yeah. Yeah, not bad for your first floor. Yeah. So, Because all the long fabric, they make them a, a whole piece of it. And uh, if you see something needle uh, on the middle, then it's not the silk. Because silk don't need needle. And uh, if you open the cover, you can check inside is the silk. And uh, you can stretch it. it. It won't be easy to be great. So this one can be used about uh, 15 to 20 years has used a very long time and uh, for the silk quilt is very good for our skin for our health you, you may already know it's anti-allergy and uh, there's no words so and uh, for the, it has very good